think that's something else that's really interesting to talk about right now, which is, you know, way back when, when the internet was just starting, people were talking about online, right? They're going online and it was like a new word, right? A new term. But now the new term is on chain. And one of the things that we believe happens so well in Africa are these communities. And so together we launched a dot ubu, which could be your digital identity. How's it everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Exponential Africa, where we explore the cutting edge technologies and innovations shaping our continent and the world. Today, we dive into the future of decentralized identity, which affects almost all of us in our lives because we all have our own identity and how it's poised to transform the digital landscape. Our guest is Sandy Carter, the COO of Unstoppable Domains, a trailblazer in the Web3 identity space, Sandy has been at the forefront of this revolution, helping to build a more secure user-owned internet. And we'll discuss her journey in the Web3 world and explore the game-changing potential of decentralized identity. Make sure to like and subscribe to our page. And with that, let me welcome Sandy to the stage. Sandy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mick. How are you? All good. Doing great. And... Um, where you you're, all bundled, you're all bundled up there. It must be cold, huh? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm in Cape Town. It's pretty chilly, but uh, I think we're at the end of end of winter here in in South Africa. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we're almost at the end of summer here where I am. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, I think you're you you know your timing is going to be right. Uh, you know, as you when you come to South Africa, you're gonna it's going to be the the start of summer. So it should be good. Oh, that's nice. I like it hot. So that'll be nice. So Sandy, let's let's kick off by just um, you know maybe you could just share your journey in the Web three world and uh, how you got into decentralized identity and what led you to Unstoppable Domains. I mean, Unstoppable Domains is really has been leading the way in this field with you know three point nine or four million downloads uh, uh, domains bought already. So you know what excites you most about the space? How did you get into it? Um, yeah, please share. Yeah, well, thanks, Mick. Uh, so I was at Amazon Web Services. Hopefully everybody knows what that is. Great company to work for. Um, and the interesting thing was I was first brought in to help start our enterprise division where we were going to be supporting enterprise customers. And then I was looking at some of the new technologies that our enterprise customers were really leveraging. So things like, um, you know, cloud, of course, because we were at AWS, but also artificial intelligence and blockchain and all these other things that were going on. And so as I came in, I started looking at um, probably a couple of years in, I started looking at a lot of these technologies. And as I did the deep dive on blockchain, I was so intrigued because I was seeing tons of Web2 companies use it, like hospitals for supply chain or manufacturers or you know, a lot of regulated industries, which I ended up focusing on at the second half of my time at Amazon. And so I started doing the deep dive, going down the rabbit hole on blockchain. And of course, there's so many cool use cases. Decentralized identity is one of those. And um, I wrote an article uh, that was posted about kind of a, a point of view about the future of blockchain and where it was headed. Uh, the CEO of Unstoppable and the founder, I guess, saw it, read it. Uh, and came to Seattle to have dinner with me, and the rest was history. We started talking about how decentralized identity could, you know, it's really a game changer. Um, when we were at the World Economic Forum, we talked about it being an essential right, that you as a person own the data about you, not an entity, not a country, but you own that data. And I just was very passionate about that purpose of the mission, um, as well as everything that we could do to help people. It's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, exactly that. If you think about us as humans, you know, the, the, the first thing we actually owned was our identity before anything else in, uh, you know, on earth. And, uh, you know, you would pass down from generation to generation, your father's name or your, your, yep. your parents' name, your lineage. It was the only way to understand where you came from, who was your community. Uh, and now with Unstoppable and what you're doing, it's really enabling people to have that same experience in the digital format, right? That's right. In fact, if you think about it, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I already own my identity, right? I have a username and password on this platform or that platform or that platform. First of all, you have multiples, uh, which is a problem. 
But the second thing is you don't actually own that digital identity. Um, we saw this really clearly with, uh, you know, when Twitter rebranded to X, somebody owned the identity X and it was just taken um, because he didn't really own that identity. Right. And so and then if you think about Facebook, I have tons of people who are on Facebook that are small businesses and they put up their site or they have commerce there and then it's just taken down. Why? They don't know. And then boom, it's just put back again. And so that's not owning it, right? If you own your digital identity through Unstoppable, you own it. It lives on the chain. On chain is what we call it now, on chain. Um, and that makes it really powerful because then you own that as well. And Mick, I think that's something else that's really interesting to talk about right now, which is, you know, way back when, when the internet was just starting, people were talking about online, right? They're going online. And it was like a new word, right? A new term. Like now it's so natural. Yeah, you're online, of course. But now the new term is on chain. Um, and it's coming the same thing as, as online. When online started, it was on dash line. And then it was on dash chain. And now it's online, one word. And now on chain, one word. Some, uh, you know, some people will try to correct that spelling, but most will now leave it on chain. I think that's really I know it seems small, but I think it's a big transformation for the way people are thinking about things. Like, is this on chain? Um, is this data on chain? Is your identity on chain? Right. I think it's so powerful. So powerful. Yeah, I think that's such a brilliant point. Um, and it's those little nuances almost, you know, slowly, slowly we, we, we evolve and develop uh, into these new formats or these new mediums. And it's those little steps that that get us there, and I, you know I think that's a great insight uh, to that because in in our world uh, we're used to talking about being on chain, but you're so right. Most of the 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 pop, most of the world uh, it's a very new concept for them. And I mean, how does decentralize? How does it work exactly? Uh, being on chain, or you know, this idea of decentralized identity or owning your own data, Web three as an example. Yeah, so um, so if you think about the way it works in Web2, um, when you store your data, it's owned by an entity or a company or a com country. It's owned by someone and it's stored in a centralized location. Being on chain means that it's actually stored as blocks of information and it's distributed across many different um many different areas. So no one person, no one entity, no one company, no one country owns it. Uh, it's blocks of information. And I think that's so powerful because, because no one person owns it, no one person can shut it down or change it. Um, what I really like too is decentralization gives you a lot of great capabilities that you can do that you could not do without having it be on chain. Um, and there are many different things. I know we'll talk about them, but, you know, having soul bound tokens means it's something that's yours. You can't transfer it um, or just a token that you can transfer because you want to provide provide it to others. So I think there's so many powerful concepts. Um, I was at Davos this year in January. And while not a theme, what I noticed across everything was everybody was talking about going on chain. So like NASA was talking about space debris and placing it on chain for uh, giving out fractionalized ownership. We heard uh, clothing companies talking about being on chain for authenticity so that they could prove this blouse was by somebody. Um, we heard food companies talking about putting their origin story on chain so they could prove that they were sustainable and organic and everything they were doing. And so it was interesting, while not a theme, a horizontal theme, it cut across every different presentation I went to um, at Davos. So I think it's coming, you know, it's coming. Amazing. Yeah, that, that's, that's. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's it seems like a no brainer when you understand how the technology works and, you know, how it's going to improve all of our interactions with, you know, taking friction out of the system, using smart contracts on chain uh, to take out a lot of the intermediaries or, you know, blockages that normally, uh, we, you know, that we all live with in today's uh, processes and systems. Uh, what are some of the, you know, I know it's early days and, you know, a lot of the use cases are around identity, um, but what are some of the applications you, you know, you've 
already got in motion and some of the things that you, you are coming up very soon? Well, um, I'll give you a couple of examples. One is one is I think a personal example. A friend of mine live uh, a friend of mine was born in Venezuela. She lives in the U.S. now. Her mother passed away about a year ago, and her mother gave her her birth certificate. It was a piece of paper. Um, she went to look for it. She couldn't find it. Could not find her birth certificate. Well, in the U.S., I don't know about in South Africa, you really need to be able to prove like you where you were born, what year, what day, etc. And so she called the hospital in Venezuela. It has burned down. So she doesn't have a contact there anymore. And she called me up and I, she said, oh, my gosh, if I had one of those digital identity thingies you talk about, I could have my my birth certificate online and I could just grab it and get it versus all the things I'm having to do to get it. What a great example, right? Digitizing your birth certificate. Um, we know that California, West Virginia, New Jersey, a lot of these states in the U.S. are now digitizing your car title. Now, think about that. That's kind of cool, right? So your car title now will become on chain and now you can find it. You can hide it, too. So if you don't want people knowing you have five motorcycles, it's OK. You don't have to share it. But now you can digitize. I think there's a lot of um, options here for citizens. Um, this is one of the reasons why we started working with Austin, the city of Austin, because we see so much potential for citizens to have digitized driver's license, chamber of commerce membership, um, car titles, the whole nine yards. I think that's a great use case. Um, another use case that I think is really cool. Uh, oh, by the way, I just wrote about that use case about digitizing car titles and what states are doing um, in my Forbes article, too, if you want to go read all the details. One of the companies is called Champs Title. And then there's uh, there's like two or three companies that are doing this today, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, another company is uh, digitizing this information, placing information on chain for pets. So think about how many pets there are in the world. There are tons of pets and people love pets just like they do their own sons and daughters. And so what they're doing now is they're putting information about the pet on chain and they're doing that. It's all secured by the blockchain and they're using artificial intelligence now on that data to provide customized recommendations. So a pet parent can find out, oh, well, this is a good, you know, a good food for my um, Shih Tzu or this is a good sh food for my German Shepherd or, you know, this is a great Good toy. So it's, it's crazy, right, that people are doing this for their pets. Um, other interesting things are diplomas. Uh, LinkedIn had stated that about a third of people on LinkedIn who put they went to a university actually didn't go to that university. In fact, yesterday I was talking to, not yesterday, Friday, I was talking to a reporter and she goes, oh, I noticed that you went to Harvard. Was that like the real Harvard? And I was like, yeah, I got, I got my MBA from Harvard. And she's like, oh, OK. Yeah. She said, I just interviewed someone and I was asking them about Harvard. And it turns out turns out that they went to a weekend camp at Harvard and they had put Harvard on their um, LinkedIn profile. Why is that? Well, LinkedIn is not on chain. There's nobody there to verify the data that you put. So technically, you could put whatever you wanted. Who's going to check it out? Um, but imagine having your diploma on chain that you can see in your digital identity. And so you could say, hey, I really went to Harvard. Um, we're seeing people do this for ticket. I mean, I could go on and on and on, Mick. There's so many That's, real world use cases. It's just incredible. Yeah, like I think what's with, on that LinkedIn um, example, I heard that LinkedIn is actually looking at uh, bringing in blockchain into LinkedIn so that you could very easily, as Harvard, share your smart contract with LinkedIn. When so, when a user connects their, their wallet or identity, their degrees are just showing and there's no trickery because, you know, we also have, you know, I, I, interesting to hear that a third of all the, de you know, the degrees on there are false. Um, but this would stop all of that. And, yeah, and also what's so interesting, Sorry, go ahead. you know, a lot of these examples you spoke about are physical uh, applications or real world examples. Um, but also in the digital formats, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same use case because you use your identity or your, your own dom domain to, you know, hold all your digital assets. And, um, you know, you know, we've just launched the AfricaRare.ubu domains. 
uh, now that you can, you know, as the first TLD in Africa um, with Unstoppable, Africa, Africa Rare and Unstoppable. Um, cool. And that will allow the, the users to be able to hold all their, their land, their, their profiles, their interactions, their gameplays, um, you know, a, a host of variety of things. Uh, do you want to share a yeah. bit more on some of the other digital? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say they're wearables. Yes, we have. Um, so we consider our uh, digital identity platform almost like the hub, right, where you store everything. You can store uh, physical um, digital assets there, like digital assets that are now represented by, sorry, physical assets that are now represented by a dis digital element or a digital asset. So, for example, um, you could have all of your wearables inside of your digital identity. These are wearables that you can use in the metaverse or in a game. And I find this quite interesting. You know, one of my daughters just celebrated the birthday with a, one of her little girlfriends. And so I asked her girlfriend what she wanted. Now, I thought she was going to ask for clothes or jewelry or I knew her mom was redoing her room. But all she asked for was Roblox. You know, the Robux that are out there today that you can use in the game. If you don't know it, you have to go check it out. It's a, like a virtual world, primarily today used by kids and boys and girls. Uh, but adults are coming in, too, for sure. Um, but it was fascinating to me. And so, you know, being a, a good mom who's an entrepreneur as well, um, I was just asking her, like, why did you not ask for like a shirt or a necklace? Why did you only ask for Roblox that you can buy digital assets with? And she said, oh, Miss Carter, well, that uh, that physical assets is going to go away. My digital bedspread, my digital necklace, I can wear it until I'm really old. I can have it forever. What a difference oh, in right. mindset. What a difference in mindset, right, between the next generation and where we are thinking about, oh, that's not a sustainable asset. The digital one is sustainable. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I've never heard that that one. But I, I think that, you know, it's so, it's, it's, you know, it's so important to the youth to, you know, to have this identity or, you know, where they're hanging out with their friends to be able to, to um, badge, you know, who they are. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I love that, that concept of that it actually needs to keep the value. It actually holds its value over time and, and you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't um, decay like, like physical goods. Or... Yeah, she was telling me, she said, my favorite shirt, I just outgrew it. I had to give it away. But I've got this digital shirt that I love and I wear in Roblox that's and so it's going to be with me forever, right? <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> But, you know, imagine, I'm sure you have the same experience. You know, I go in to sell a corporation on getting their digital identity and they're like, I don't get it. Like, why would I want something digital? Like, so I have to take time and explain everything. Here are these kids. They get the digital piece. They want to know what we can do with it. What's the utility? How do we get going on it? And right. It's a different mindset. Yeah. It's quite, quite fascinating. I think that when that group of kids comes into the workforce, I think this whole group, this whole area is just going to accelerate because they know and they understand it. They're used to playing games online. They know the value of a skin and, you know, a metaverse. They understand all of that, right? They're digitally native. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's, I wanted to ask you about some of the challenges uh, that you're facing uh, when, when trying to, um, you know, uh, exactly that, you know, to include this into um, mass adoption. And, and and what are some of the, you know, do you believe that this will help uh, improve the world, you know, or create a more inclusive and equi equitable digital world, at least? I really do. You know, I think that, um, I think in terms of inclusion, we try to make the price of a digital identity uh, very easy to acquire. In some places, we did a free giveaway for a while. In some places, we, um, you know, we offered them for the lowest price is two dollars. We did it for half off for like a dollar. Um, so we try to make it accessible in price so that anyone can get their own digital identity because we feel like that's really important as you move forward. Um, and if you think about, you know, your digital identity really represents you, and therefore you should own all that information. Um, you know, I was just reading an article that said that Facebook or I guess Meta now and Google 
sold our data for a hundred billion dollars. So our, that data has value and it's our data and we're not getting value for it. So I'm now seeing some companies that are asking for data and swapping rewards for it, right? So that incentive, you know, incentivizing them is really powerful. Even on our platform, we have a, a game called um, Meta Rides and they are like a, a race car, you know, you race around a track. And if you get on the leaderboard, you get a token gated experience or an experience that if you've been on the leaderboard, that gives you rights to come into a certain exclusive club. And I think we're going to start seeing that more and more, Mick. Because people today are looking to connect. They're looking to connect with their tribe, with their community. And I think, you know, having a digital identity is one of the ways that enables you to come together, have conversations that are global, and really form some long-lasting friendships um, through that commonality of whatever it is, whether it's having gone to Harvard and you get a digital certificate, or, you know, that you both like the same game online. Or you both have the same wearable, some any of those things can really cause an eruption of, you know, commonality that you can use and leverage as well. Yeah, it's so exciting. And I think I think even for corporations or organizations or community, people that have large communities, it's a great way to um, include the whole community and to share with them because they, they get ownership in that community. And you can very easily, you know, um, reward them with you know, different physical or digital uh, rewards yep. or assets, um, you know, and, bec and because it's all on chain, it's all verifiable, it's all um, viewable, and it's very easy, easy to uh, distribute. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, a lot of folks who look at it, they're and they're running loyalty programs today, and they see the power of being on chain, because it's not easy to fake something on chain, right? It's it's verified, it's trusted and verified. So I can't pass off something to someone else to go get a 20% off a discount uh, because it's not gonna be on their chain. So it, it has so much potential, we're just getting started, but it has so much potential to make a game change in loyalty programs too. Nick and I uh, met up in New York at NFT NYC and we were chatting and we were talking just about all these attributes and one of the things that we believe happens so well in Africa are these communities. And so together we launched a dot Ubu, which could be your digital identity, not just for the game for Africa Rare, but also to use to transact in crypto as a gamer tag, um, to do group chats and everything else. So if you don't have your dot Ubu, you definitely should get grab that dot Ubu today because it has all the benefits that we've been talking about all day long. Absolutely. And and to get it, you can just go to unstoppabledomains.com, unstoppable uh, search Africa Rare uh, dot, and dot .ubu um, to get to get uh, your own dot .ubu domain. They are selling like hotcakes, so you better hurry if you don't have your name yet and, uh, and make sure to get one. So this is now my digital profile for sandycarter.ubu. It shows my portfolio. It shows all my activities in here. It has a reputation score. You can see I've linked a wallet up to it. I can customize this to be whatever I want. Here was an initiative we did with empowering women in Africa. And then I also have, um, you know, sandycarter.ubu, sandy.ubu. I've got other uh, domains in here as well. And then here you can see all of the, um, of the badges that also go along with it that enable me to have group chats in an encrypted fashion. So any of these badges could be a group chat for what we need to get done. Um, and this enables us to, um, you know, to really, I think, have those tribal conversations um, that we need to have. Okay, so then what we can do is now we can go down and say, okay, the group was, I think, journeyman, journeyman, maybe it's under dot ubu. Ubu, there it is. So I can join this group chat. Amazing. And you see in this particular group chat, there are 43 members in this group chat. Wow. And these these guys are the folks who have have um, purchased one of the dot Ubus early on in the game. And you can see I can say, hey, hello to all my dot Ubu friends. And this is all encrypted. And when I send it out there, it goes to everybody who's part of this community. 
So it only sends it to people. Yeah, it's really cool, right? And you can do that for multiple groups uh, that are out there today um, that you can uh, showcase messages and that sort of thing too, too. So here's my journeyman one. You can see this is Polygon where um, Sandeep communicates. These are my whales. So this is where I communicate with our best customers. You can see Blockchain has one, Secret, Pog, Anime Addicts, uh, Luca has Arctic Ambassadors. So you can see I belong to all of these groups. And then any group that you belong to, you can chat with everybody, maybe even get some alpha from uh, Mick, um, you know, as you go, as you go along. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So I think, I think especially for, um, you know, the people of Africa, this is such an important tool to upskill, to empower, uh, and to really allow, you know, our communities to not be left behind during this techn technological transformation. So, so thanks so much for that. And um, we're going to hear a lot more about it uh, at the Singularity South Africa Summit taking place 21, 22 October. Uh, make sure to get your tickets if you haven't. And thank you, Sandy, for sharing your insights and expertise on this incredible future um, of decentralized identity and owning our own data. Uh, it's clear that this technology holds tremendous potential to reshape the way we interact online uh, and create a more secure, equitable digital world. So thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you, Mick. Let's go on chain. Let's go on chain. And to all our <laughs> listeners, hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to like and subscribe. Go out and get your own .ubu domain. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Keep smiling. Cheers. Cheers.